All right, so let's move on to electric potential, and then we'll also look at the potential energy that is contained within a collection of charges. So one, we want to look at the electric potential due to a collection of charges, and then the potential energy as well. So uh, first of all, the electric potential due to a point charge is uh, given as KQ over R, where R is the, uh, or when, excuse me, when R equals infinity, then V is equal to zero. So that is if I have a charge here, and it's plus Q, and I want to know the potential at this point, this will be that distance R, and I can find that potential just do KQ over R, and we'll do several examples like this. However, if I make this distance go very, very far away, so that it's basically an infinite distance away, uh, then that potential goes to zero. Because notice that as R goes up, V goes down. Now this equation is derived through calculus, but we can sort of do this ad hoc derivation of it. Now we said that the change in potential is equal to delta E times, or excuse me, uh, E times delta X, our electric field times our change in our uh, our position. Well, I can write this, I can, this isn't really a derivation, it's just sort of a little ad hoc thing, as E times R, where X is like R, our distance. And we know that E is KQ over R squared times R, and then that gives me our expression KQ over R. To really do this correctly, you have to use calculus, and we won't get into that here. Now, the electric potential, unlike the electric field, is a scalar quantity. That really makes your life a lot easier when you're dealing with um, electric potentials, because you don't have to worry about the directions. And you don't have to worry about all that jazz of adding up vectors and dealing with x and y components and adding the vectors. So the potential of multiple charges adds uh, algebraically. Not like vectors. So just a couple of things. Electric fields are vectors. And whenever you deal with electric fields, you have to treat them like vectors. Potential is a scalar quantity. And whenever you deal with potential, all you got to do is add them up. Okay? So it makes life a lot easier, and that, that'll become important later. All right. Which of these statements is true at the point P, and which, which is at the center of the square? Now, in this case, um, let me do a simpler one. Let's say that I have a uh, two charges, a plus Q and a minus Q. And I want to know what is the electric field and what is the potential at this point. Now, the electric field, which I'll do in blue, the electric field due to this charge is going to be in this direction. And the electric field due to this charge is going to be in that direction. So my net electric field is to the right and it's non-zero. So my net electric field is greater than zero. However, if I want to know my electric potential, my electric potential is at that point. Now, my electric potential due to this charge at this point is V equals KQ over R. The electric potential at this point due to this charge is V equals K negative Q over R. So if I add these two values up, it gives me a potential, kq over r, plus k negative q over r, equal to zero. Note that I've done something a little bit differently here than I've done in the past, and that is when I add up the, when I calculate the voltage here, the potential, I actually do include those negative signs. So when we're dealing with these scalar quantities, we do need to include the sign of the charge. And we didn't do that before for forces and for electric fields, but that's because we were dealing with vector quantities. And the sign of the charge came into consideration when we determined what was the direction of the vector. But in this case, these are scalar quantities, and you're not doing any of that business where you have light charges attract, opposite charges repel, or excuse me, light charges repel, opposite charges attract. Um, so you have to include the sign of the charge here when you're calculating the potential. Now this problem is a little bit more complicated. I'll let you try it on your own. But first, you want to ask yourself, at this point P, 
what are the electric fields. So for example, due to this charge, the electric field is in this direction. You want to do that for all four. And then you also want to ask yourself, what is the electric potential due, contributed by each of these four identical charges? And I'll leave you to try that on your own, and we'll see that also in some other concept test questions. Let's stop there, and we'll pick back up with this in just a few minutes.